Another type of acquisitive reorganization is a type C reorganization. This is an asset for stock acquisition. The acquiring corporation obtains substantially all of the target's assets in exchange for the acquiring corporation's voting stock and possibly a limited amount of other consideration. So the important things in here are that substantially all of the assets must be acquired and they must be acquired for mostly voting stock. The substantially all test says at least 70% of the gross assets and 90% of the net assets must be acquired and the voting stock must comprise at least 80% of the assets exchanged in the transaction. If liabilities are assumed, they reduce the amount of other assets allowed dollar for dollar. So if they exceed 20% of the value of the transaction, the transaction will qualify as a C reorg only if no other assets are exchanged except voting stock. The target has to distribute the stock, securities, and other property it receives plus other property it retains to the shareholders as part of the reorganization, and the corporate charter and minimum assets required to keep it alive may be retained by the target. So if the target just wants to, to be a, if the acquiring corporation just wants to keep the target alive to retain its name or something like that, it can do that and it can keep enough assets in that target corporation to allow it to retain the target corporation's charter. Okay, so in a type C, we have a corporation wanting to acquire T. A is going to transfer voting stock. Remember, it has to be at least 80% and possibly securities and other consideration to T. T is going to transfer substantially all of its assets. Remember, that's that 70 slash 90% test back to A. Then T is going to distribute that A voting stock and anything else it received out to its shareholders and those shareholders are going to transfer back the T stock and securities, and T liquidates, usually. So after that, we have A Corporation, which owns A's assets and liabilities, and substantially all of T's assets and liabilities, and it's owned by A shareholders and T former shareholders. We like type C reorganizations because there's no requirement to comply with merger laws, you might still have to comply with other corporate and securities laws, though. The acquiring corporation assumes only liabilities specified in the acquisition agreement, not those that are unknown or contingent. So that's different than the type A. And then shareholders don't have to approve it, so it can be easier to, to pull it off. But disadvantages are that I have to use voting stock. Remember, I didn't have to do that in a type A. I can't use as much boot in the transaction. In type A, remember, I only had to use 40% stock here. I have to use at least 80%. And then often liabilities assumed are going to exceed 20% of the value of the transaction, so no other assets can be used in the transaction. And if the target wishes to dispose of assets or keep assets, it can cause the transaction to, sub to fail the substantially all test. There's also a triangular type C, just like there was a triangular type A. A triangular type C reorg allows the voting stock of the parent corporation to be used by a controlled subsidiary corporation to acquire substantially all the target corporation's assets. The stock used must be solely the voting stock of the parent, and the subsidiary can provide additional consideration in the form of securities, money, or other property. In problem 51, we have Arnold Corporation who plans to acquire all the assets of Turner Corporation in an asset for stock transaction. Turner's assets have a $600,000 adjusted basis and a $1 million fair market value. And which of these transactions will qualify as a type C, assuming Turner liquidates? Okay, so A, the assets are exchanged for $800,000 of Arnold voting common stock and $200,000 of cash. All right, so remember that Voting stock must comprise 80% of the consideration in the transaction, and they have to acquire substantially all of the assets. So in, in A, it qualifies because it looks like all the assets are transferred, and voting stock makes up 80% of the, the transaction. All right, B, the assets are exchanged for $800,000 of Arnold voting common stock and $200,000 of bonds. Right, same thing. Yes, the equity still makes up, voting equity still makes up 80% of the transaction. So this complies. C, the assets are exchanged for $1 million of Arnold non-voting preferred stock. This is not a C because remember 
C requires it to be 80% voting stock. So this does not qualify here. We could see if this will qualify as an A, but it does not qualify as a C. All right, in D, the assets are exchanged for $700,000 of Arnold voting common stock and Arnold's assumption of $300,000 of Turner's liabilities. This still qualifies because remember, liabilities are not going to count in, in disqualifying a reorganization. So this is going to qualify, but what this does is it prevents Arnold from using anything but equity in this transaction. E, the assets are exchanged for $700,000 of Arnold voting common stock, Arnold's assumption of $200,000 of Turner's liabilities, and $100,000 in cash. This is not going to qualify. Remember, liabilities reduce dollar for dollar the amount of other assets allowed in the transaction. So the transaction is valued at a million dollars. Equity has to make up 80% of that. Liabilities alone will not, will not spoil the transaction, but they will reduce the amount of other property allowed dollar for dollar. So the $200,000 of liabilities already comprise 20% of the transaction. Therefore, nothing else besides stock can be used to have this qualify as a C, so the cash is going to spoil this thing. As part of a type C reorganization, Ash Corporation exchanges $250,000 of its voting common stock and $50,000 of its bonds for all of Texas Corporation's assets. Texas liquidates with each of its shareholders receiving equal amounts of the Ash stock and bonds. Barbara has a $50,000 basis in her stock and George has a $200,000 basis in his stock. George and Barbara, who are unrelated, each own 8% of Ash's stock immediately after the reorg. At the time of the reorg, Texas's earnings and profits balance is $75,000, and its assets have an adjusted basis of $225,000. All right, in part A, what is the amount of Texas's recognized gain or loss in the asset transfer and on the distribution of the stock and bonds? So first we need to know if this is a, qualifies as a type C, and it looks like it does because voting common stock makes up $250,000 of the $300,000 value of the transaction. All right, so that is 83.3%, and it only has to comprise 80%, so it does, and it also tells us it, it exchanges that for all of Texas Corporation's assets. So we have acquired substantially all of the assets. We have actually acquired all of the assets. So it qualifies as a type C. Since it qualifies as a type C, remember there's generally no gain or loss except in, to the extent of boot property. And boot property will require the shareholders to recognize some gain but not loss. So in this problem, we do have some boot property. These bonds are boot property. All right, so part A, what's the amount of Texas's recognized gain or loss in the transfer? And then on the distribution of the stocks and bonds. Okay, so the realized gain is 75,000 because the amount realized is 300,000 and the adjusted basis in those assets is 225, but none of that is recognized even though they received boot. And remember the target corporation on the receipt of boot does not recognize gain or loss so long as they distribute that boot out to their shareholders. Same thing on the distribution. So there's going to be no recognized gain or loss to the target, to Texas, as a result of this transaction, even though boot was part of the transaction. B, what's Ash's basis in the assets it acquired? So they are going to take a carryover basis that the target had in the assets is going to now become Ash's basis because target did not recognize any gain. Part C, what's the amount in character of each shareholder's recognized gain or loss? Here is where the boot is going to cause some gain to be recognized. Okay, so shareholder by shareholder, first we can start with Barbara. Barbara had a basis in her shares of $50,000. Barbara received common stock and debt, and remember the total common stock was two fifty, dollars and the total debt was fifty. dollars and Barbara and George split that in half. So for Barbara, she received $150,000 of assets and her basis was $50,000. So her realized gain was 100000 
she is going to recognize gain to the extent of the greater of boot or the realized gain. The $25,000 of debt she received is boot, so her recognized gain is going to be $25,000. George also received $150,000 of assets, but George's basis in his shares was $200,000, so George has a realized loss. Even though there's boot in the transaction, we're not allowed to recognize loss in a non-taxable acquisition, reorganization, so George recognizes no loss. Part D, what's the basis of each shareholder's stock and each shareholder's bonds? So Barbara's basis in the stock is $50,000. To that, we're going to add the gain of $25,000 that she recognized and we're going to subtract the boot, the $25,000 of boot. All right, so her basis in the stock is $50,000. Her basis in the bonds is $25,000 because the bonds are the boot property, so they take the fair market value basis. George's stock is going to take a basis of $175 because it's the transferred basis minus the fair market value of any boot. All right, he didn't recognize any gain, so we don't add that to it. So his stock is going to have a basis of 175 and the bonds are going to have a basis of $25,000.